Welcome back to Cutting It Close, a channel where we talk woodworking technology, a little bit of business, and make some cool projects. And in today's video, we're going to be making a simple tray like this out of a block of wood like this, running it at 600 inches a minute on my commercial CNC. So this video is going to be split up into two parts. The first part is just going to be the CNC cutting this thing out at 600 inches a minute. The second part is going to be me talking about more of the technical aspects of it, and um, really it's for the CNC machinist or for somebody that in that's interested in CNC machines. So the first half, just if you're here to watch it get cut out at 600 inches a minute, we'll get that knocked out right away. The second half is going to be me going over a little bit more of the details of just making this simple tray. Stay tuned, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy. So now that you watched the tray get cut out, um, you know, it was pretty cool. I hope you enjoyed it. Now let's go into the more technical aspects of this. Uh, we're going to talk about how, uh, how our hold down system works, why we have a vacuum and a mechanical hold down system. I will show you my vacuum pump. I'll kind of talk through um, why I ran bits a certain way, why I use an up cut and then a down cut or a down cut and then an up cut, why I use the ruffers first, uh, what kind of tolerance I had. 
and uh, some different little technical things like that. So, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, please continue watching and I hope you enjoy. So with our vacuum hold down system, we have um, some gasketing. So we have some holes poke that we punched in some uh, plywood. And then we have some gasketing going around. So this is called inboard gasketing. And what that does is whenever I turn on my vacuum pump in the back, you can actually, this, it'll actually hold down the material. Um, and now we really didn't need it for this, this one tray, right? But we, you do need it if we're making 10,000 of them. The whole purpose of this video is to video or to make this tray as if I'm making 10,000 of them. If I was just making one of them, I probably just would have ran a finisher. It would have been no problem. So, but since I'm in the mindset of I have to make 10,000 of these trays, I wanted to kind of show you if you need to make 1,000 of these trays or 100 of them, you can. So back to the gasketing. Now, this is just some holes poked through, and then we have my vacuum uh, on top of my vacuum table. When we turn my vacuum pump on, the air goes through, flows through, these, uh, flows through this grid right here, and... Um, and then the air gets caught by the gasketing, so it holds the material down. Now, since I'm using a half inch bit, it's so much torque that it's, it's still gonna pop that, it's still gonna move that if I was to cut all the way through, or um, it, it, it still would move this big of a panel, believe it or not. So we have to also use these mechanical holds down. Now you may ask, Ryan, why don't you just use these hold downs and not use this gasketing? Well, what happens whenever you're cutting out, let's say you cut out nine of these trays on a piece of wood. What happens was that that wood will kind of pop like that for some reason in the center. So whenever we use the, and I didn't always do this, but whenever we started using the, the inboard gasketing for it, it actually held it down and there's a lot less vibrations. Therefore, we had a lot less like fuzzies and uh, chip outs and stuff. So we had a lot better quality product. So now we started using the vacuum pump, which um, keeps it from chattering and then the mechanical hold downs which are just a couple bolts going in some nuts and set into this piece of plywood that we use the corners and whenever I program this machine I know that um, this is the exact corner of the machine and so I can program whatever I want into it and I know exactly where that bits gonna go and stuff like that because I have an origin set on this jig right here um, so that's pretty cool let's go take a look at my vacuum pump So this is my uh, 15 horsepower Becker vacuum pump. Um, it's driven by, it's a vein vacuum, so it has these carbon veins that spin around in there and um, it has an enormous amount of suction. It's absolutely crazy. My previous vacuum pumps on my other CNC's were really small. I think there were two horsepower or five horsepower motors. Nothing crazy. And then I get this one and it is absolutely massive. Um, it weighs a couple thousand pounds, all that good stuff. But this is the vacuum pump. It's super loud, super noisy, but it's you know, it's big enough to hold down all of my stuff on a 5 foot by 10 foot table. So it's pretty good. I have no complaints about it. And I uh, just kind of wanted to show you how massively big this is um, and how much space it takes up. Hope that helps. Let's go on to the next thing. So let's talk about why I profiled it a certain way. So I used a down cut bit first and then I used an up cut bit. If I were to just use an up cut bit, um, you know, these, these top edges would have chipped out on it. Now, if I just use a down cut bit the whole time, then you would have had a whole bunch of chips stuck in here. And remember, I'm making this for, I'm trying to get in the habit of making these for making hundreds and hundreds of them. So I use, and this is what I use on the daily, I use a down cut bit to go around and cut out this first part, and then an up cut bit um, in two passes to cut out on the second part and these are typically rougher's and what that does is that down cut bit even you know it's not too deep of a cut so the chips still get ejected out of there and that up cut bit since this thing is so deep and I can't do it in one pass that up cut bit ejects all those chips upward and um, allows my bits to last a little bit longer and um, that really helps whenever I run this thing 12 hours a day well this thing is 1.75 inches thick or roughly 44 millimeters and so I can't take one pass at it. So I had to do multiple passes. And I don't like using a compression bit when I have to do more than one pass. Therefore, I kind of made my own compression bit with a down cut going first and then that up cut having two passes going on the border. So then I followed it up with a finisher. 
uh, taking off that sixteenth of an inch or that point zero five of an inch that I left on there, a millimeter or something like that, that I left on there to have this nice clean edge on this bowl. So then that finisher came around, which is a down cut, which is fine because it's not taking multiple passes, right? If it was taking multiple passes, I'd want it to be an up cut, but you, you worry about uh, this edge getting chipped out. So I made it a down cut and I left an onion skin on there. The reason I leave an onion skin is so this thing doesn't move on me. Uh, once again, I'm cutting out one, not a big deal, but I, one, I don't want to hurt my beautiful vacuum table. Um, and then two, I can just take it to a nice little flush trim bit um, that we'll talk about and cut it out and it's beautiful and I don't have to worry about it moving or anything like that. So once again, pocketed it out, had 92% step over, did a raster with ruffers, followed it up with a finisher going a little bit deeper and cleaning up that edge with that offset that I left. Then having my profile bits come, use that very same ruffer that I used to pocket it out with do the first pass, and then I had my other rougher come, which was an upcut, ejecting those chips out of there um, for the second pass on the profile. And then I had the finisher come and make this nice clean edge. Once again, it's very not practical for this one. Uh, I understand that, but I just wanted to show y'all um, for kind of the, almost this experiment showing y'all how it is when I'm running a machine like this and how much different it is than a hobby CNC. Um, and I know this because my hobby CNC, or if I was just cutting out one of these, you know, finisher, no problem. Uh, put a quarter inch finisher in there. Um, I wouldn't be able to make it this thick, but I put a quarter inch finisher in there, cut it all out, no big deal. Uh, but since I'm using, you know, since I'm using this big CNC, I have to do it that way. Now, what I really like about my flush trim bit that I use, I actually found uh, the spiral flush trim bit, and it cuts out really, really clean. And I really like using it, and I use it, I use it every day in this shop. Now let's talk about the feed rate, uh, feeds and speeds. So why did I run this thing at 600 inches a minute? Um, well, because I could, because it's a half inch bit and that was the correct chip load. Now you're saying, well, Ryan, it's right on the brink because I ran it at 600 inches a minute, 16,000 RPMs. And I believe that's like 0.19 or 0.188 or something like that on the chip load chart. Well, since I was cutting more than a half inch, just a little bit more, I kind of lean to the lower side of that chip load chart. So the lower, um, I don't know, whatever. I, so I kind of lean to the lower side of that chip load calculator because I was making a cut deeper than the diameter of the bit. I hope that makes sense. So since the cut was deeper than the diameter of the bit, I lean to the smaller side of that chip load. And red oak is very hard. Um, it's not like I'm cutting you know, maple or soft maple or anything like that. So. Could I have spun up the RPMs to 18,000 and then ran this thing at 800 inches a minute or 700 inches a minute? I certainly could. But you know, I didn't want to break my CNC or, or go there, but I, I definitely could have. I don't think it would have got to 800 inches a minute in this short of a span because it has to speed up and then slow down um, in this short of a span. And so I thought 600, um, one was cool for video purposes and two, it could actually get to 600 and then slow down in a relatively safe amount of time. Um, same thing on the pocketing. I ran it at 600 inches a minute. And once again, on the finisher, um, the finisher is completely trial and error. I just, I know that taking off, if, if I was to run that finisher faster, it would leave little fuzzies. And if I run it slower, it burns up my finisher. So I know just through personal experience that running that half inch finisher at 225 inches a minute and 18,000 RPMs is my sweet spot in taking off that little edge. Um, you know, I had to learn how to use that rougher and finisher combination early on, and I don't know why they didn't, nobody ever tells you these things. Uh, is this a school of hard knocks? And so I hope going over this, even though this may be a little lengthy and a little too technical, maybe even a little boring, I hope this really, really helps you out um, as you're machining stuff, even if you can't use it now. I hope you use little tidbits of it and, and your machining practices. And um, yeah, that's all I can really think of for this technical aspect. If I missed anything, please comment in the comment section below. And um, yeah, let's shoot to the outro. So everybody, I hope that, you know, even though it was just a simple trade that we cut out of a block of wood, um, I hope you got a lot out of it, seeing how we machined it, why we machined it a certain way. And I hope this really brings you along your CNC journey. Um, I hope you left this video with more knowledge than when you started this video with. 
And don't forget, if you ain't cutting it close, you ain't cutting it right.